Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of RESA Live. My name is Ashley Adams, and I'm a technical marketing engineer at RESA. Today, I'm going to demonstrate two-way slab design in RESA Floor ES using the design strip method. So here I have a structure. It's a multi-story wood frame structure sitting on top of a concrete podium. This is a, a common example of a model that we might see uh, in RESA support. Um, so uh, what we're going to focus on today will be that two-way slab design here. And so I'm going to go ahead and switch us into a floor plan. We'll go to our parking garage floor plan. So in this model, I already have the slab and the columns and my walls, um, the slab and those support elements already drawn. Uh, but if I were going to start one from scratch, um, if I were to start a floor plan from scratch, um, we would want to be sure to choose that concrete floor slab. So um, that's going to put us in that uh, Risa floor ES mode, and we'll get that Risa floor slab or concrete floor slab. Um, and then down here, um, I can choose the default area load. In this instance, it would be the, the garage area load. And then our reinforced concrete slab type. And then we have an option here between a couple different design methods. So we can use the design strips or the user defined method. In this video, we're gonna go over the design strips method. Um, we, if you're interested in learning more about the user defined method, we do have another great video here on our YouTube channel that walks you through that process as well. So I highly recommend referencing that video to little, learn a little bit more about that. So today we'll just be looking at the design strips. So I already have my floor uh, defined here and we can go into our floor spreadsheet. We can see that we've got our parking garage and then the design strip method here specified. If you begin creating your model and you decide that down the line, if you want to switch to the user defined method, you always have that option as well. And we also can uh, switch into our slab definition spreadsheet here to view the slabs that we're, we're going to be working with here. In this case, we've got a semi rigid slab. Um, this is going to, we're going to define this slab uh, based on a 16 inch thickness with a 4000 normal weight concrete. And so the program is going to actually calculate the stiffness of this diaphragm based on those properties here. So that's the slab that we um, have defined um, in our slab definition spreadsheet. And we can confirm um, that our slab is in fact semi-rigid here by our slab spreadsheet. So we can see that semi-rigid definition there as well. So the model that I have here, um, we've already got all of our support lines drawn. What we wanna do before we start drawing some support lines is actually come into our reinforced slab design rules. So we're gonna set up our design rules here. And since we're using the design strip method, we'll look at this north-south rebar, um, as well as this east-west rebar. Um, I could set up my design rules here in the spreadsheet by uh, um, clicking in, the, in these cells. And then I can also click on this tab here. And we could specify all of our uh, variables this way. However, I usually like to press this little red arrow here. Um, and I like to edit in this dialogue. It's a little bit more user friendly and I like the graphical interface. So to set up our design rules, um, to be able to use the um, design strip method here in the program, I'm gonna specify the top cover and the bottom cover for my slab. And I'm also gonna explicitly state that I want, let's say number fives uh, to be my reinforcement for this slab here. And the minimum and maximum spacings, I can change these, but essentially the program is going to optimize the reinforcement and it's gonna find the spacing um, to be able to optimize that reinforcement for you. Um, there is the max bending check here. So I do have the option if I want to maybe set this to 0 0.9, I have that option available to me. Um, I can also switch in here into this deflection tab and um, I can specify the ratio or I can set a specific deflection uh, dimension here as well. Um, and I can even choose from a variety of load categories. So this would be good um, to set your deflection limitations and the program will also optimize the, the reinforcement based on uh, those deflection ratios. So I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. We can see that my changes that I made in that dialog updated my spreadsheet here. I can also come in and I can make a few changes to, let's say, my east-west rebar here. Maybe we'll do number sixes for, for the east-west. And so now that we've got the design rules uh, set up for our reinforcement, we'll go, go ahead and start drawing some support lines. So to do that, I'm going to choose the support line option here to the left. 
And um, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing these. So the strip width, What's going to happen is when I draw a support line, the program is going to um, automatically calculate the distance uh, between my support lines that I have drawn, and it's going to kind of find that tributary width between my support lines. Um, so I can choose to let the program find that automatically, or if I wanted to set a fixed dimension for what that strip width is going to be, I can do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and choose automatic. I'm going to use the north-south strip orientation. And I'm going to set uh, my design cuts to be 50 cuts per strip. So essentially what a design cut is, is it's just a, a two-dimensional cut through that thickness of that slab. And so for every strip I have, I'm going to have 50 cuts in that strip. Um, and then my design rule. So those are the design rules that we just set up there in that spreadsheet. Um, I'm going to use the north-south since I'm using the north-south orientation. And I'm going to go ahead, keep this dialog open, and choose apply. So I've already got a few support lines drawn here. These have just shown up because I had them hidden before, but that's just to save us a little bit of time here. So essentially to draw a support line, I can just click on the first support and I can click through all the way to the last support. And what we'll see is that the program recognized all those intermediate columns as supports. And so it created additional spans. So I have spans that are in, uh, that make up my full support line. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to draw this one here as well. And I'm going to switch back over into the east and west orientation. And so it's important to note that while my plan here is very orthogonal and it is oriented north and south and plan east-west, um, it is okay to, it doesn't necessarily have to be east-west and north and south when you draw your support lines. The really important thing is to make sure that your support lines are perpendicular to each other, or at least as perpendicular as they can be. Um, it's okay uh, if they're a little bit um, not, but um, in general, it, it's, it's a good rule of thumb to have these perpendicular. So now that I have those support lines drawn, I'm going to go ahead and choose to close out of that. Um, I'm actually going to want to uh, generate the strips. So I'll go ahead and choose this generate strips option here on the left hand side. And so that happened. And to view those, I can actually come over here and view all of them. And so these are the design strips that the program automatically calculated. So when I came in here and I chose the support line option and I chose that automatic, um, the program automatically ca calculated the boundaries for these support lines. Um, so if I want to, I can actually choose from this drop down menu and let's choose to view maybe just, um, let's look at the north south design column strips. Um, so actually what we've got going here is we've got, um, you can see the column strip um, in addition to the middle strip. So what the program is doing is it's calculating um, the width to a column strip and a middle strip so that it can optimize the reinforcement um, for both of those individually. So the program's gonna calculate design cuts for each of these strips individually. So there'll be about 150 um, design cuts within this one support in this one span. So um, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and choose to view all of these. And we can notice there's a little bit of some misalignment here where the program maybe couldn't recognize that slab edge. Um, so I can easily clean this up by just modifying my, su my uh, uh, support lines. So I'm going to choose the support line option here. And I'm actually going to modify the area this time. So I'm going to choose that modify area option. And I'm going to choose the edge align tool. So this is going to allow me to adjust the design strip edges um, for those that have already been created. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose apply. And to do this, I'm just gonna click the line that I wanna edit, and then uh, I'll click the line I want it to uh, be uh, spanning to. And so I can just do that for all of these other support lines. And as you'll notice as I'm doing this, uh, the lines will turn purple. So this is just an indication that the um, support or the design strips that I've been modifying, um, that they are in fact modified and uh, that that is in fact, um, something that I've changed. So now that we've got some of those a little bit more uh, rectilinear here, we can go ahead and choose to close out of that and I can go ahead and solve the problem, the model here. And so what the program is doing now is it's optimizing that reinforcement for the design strips. So the program is going to go through and create all of those cuts within that design strip. And that's how it's going to perform um, basically that one-way shear check. It's going to look 
through that thickness of that slab. And then it's also going to take that total bending moment across the individual cut. And, it, and that's how it's going to determine the reinforcement that's needed. So um, the more cuts you, you could get, um, the more forces you could extract out of the model. Um, so essentially, that's how the program is going to optimize that reinforcement for you is based on those cuts and the governing cut control for that. So what we'll go ahead and do here is I'm gonna display our reinforcement. I'm gonna choose just to display, let's look at our north-south bottom bars. So we've got some reinforcement here. We've got number fives at 10 inches on center in our bottom bars. If I wanted to, I can choose this option up here to view our top bars. And so you can see here, that the program optimized the top reinforcement over my supports um, so that it's it's only occurring where it's needed. So that's kind of the, the beauty of the, the using the support lines um, to create those column strips and really optimize the reinforcement and get it only where you need it. I do have the option up here too. If I wanted to, I could view all bars. Um, it's a little messy though. It's a little, maybe you have to zoom in to really see what you want. Um, so I usually like to look at one at a time. You could view the total bars for the north and south as well. If you want to learn a little bit more about this reinforcement, maybe you want to view it another way, what we can actually do is if we go ahead and view our, our support lines again, I can choose this detail report option. So if I come in here, I'm going to select detail report and I am going to select my support line. And now I have a detail report for that full support line that I drew. And so we can see here the shear and moment diagrams and it's broken up in between the individual spans. We can see where we have the positive moment where that top reinforcement was required. So this is for that total design strip. Um, if I want to filter this a little bit more, what I can do is actually come here and I can look specifically at that column strip. So I can look at the shear and moment in that column strip. So that's gonna be just this uh, center portion hatched here. So these are where these design cuts are occurring in that little center portion. So we can scroll down and we can see the uh, diagram for the reinforcements that's being provided where we have the positive bending moment. Um, and if I want to, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see here um, that we've actually got some different locations along the, the length of the support line. Um, but we also have here where we have a governing cut. So this is what I was saying whenever the program's gonna go through, create those 50 cuts, it's going to look at each individual cut and it is going to optimize the reinforcement based on the governing location. So what we can do here is if I wanna learn more about maybe one of those specific design cuts, I can choose this cut option up here. So I'm gonna select cut. And now I can choose to view the forces for the column strip. I can choose the middle strip to the right or to the left of the, the strip that I'm looking at. Um, and then I can choose which span I want to view along the full length. Um, so if we maybe wanna take a look at span three, um, and then I can choose the cut here. So this is the one through 50. Um, I'm gonna choose to look at maybe just, we can look at the first cut and we'll see that we've got both that top and bottom reinforcement required, and then as well as all of the code checks uh, associated with that. If I maybe scroll down here and maybe choose uh, a cut that's at the mid span, maybe it's the 20th cut, you'll see that we don't have that required reinforcement in the top anymore. So that's a really good way to go through and try and understand the results for your reinforcement. Um, if you're interested in maybe taking a look at it in a spreadsheet format, we have that option for you as well here on the results toolbar. Uh, all you have to do is actually just choose that slab result rebar uh, spreadsheet. And here you'll see a summary of the design. So it'll be organized by the design strip. Um, and then it'll be split uh, even further into the individual span, as well as the regions for the column, middle, and left uh, design strips, um, as well as the reinforcement required in the governing design. So this would be a really good instance where maybe you would want to print this out and include this within your, um, your report. So uh, another feature that's really awesome that I, I'd like to touch on is we can actually go ahead and switch. Maybe I want to view, um, let's go ahead and say the north and south top bars. And so now that I have this design, you do have the option here to go to file and we can export this as a DXF file so that you go ahead and create your uh, design drawings much quicker. Um, and that would be an easy way to export that drawing for you. So that has been a quick summary of the how to use the design strips method in Risa Floor.
Um, if you're interested in using the uh, user defined method again, I recommend uh, referencing the other video that we have published here on our YouTube channel. We can link to that in the description as well. Um, thank you guys for joining today. And if you're really interested in learning more about RISA, please subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified when we have more videos published, as well as you can visit our uh, website at risa.com. Thank you for attending.